Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. Today in this episode, I'm going to show you different features and tools available within Revit to make your elevation drawings more interesting and presentable. We are not going to use any external plugins or any other softwares to do this. So let's begin. Okay, so I have a small residential pilot project available here and I want to create an elevation on the of my west side of my building. Now the first thing I want to do is to create an elevation or use an existing one and adjust it. So I'm going to go in my site plan to see if I have an elevation in my west side. Now if you want a new elevation you can always go into the view and create a new elevation wherever you like it. I'm going to use the existing one and adjust it. Now, first thing I want to do is go ahead in my best elevation and check how it currently looks like. I'm going to put it on shaded mode to see what I have here. Now, the first thing I want to do is hide the elements that I don't want to see in my um, elevation. For example, I want to keep my level symbols here, but I don't want to see my grid lines and the sections lines. One thing you can do is select one of the grid lines, right click, hide in view category. So it's going to hide all the grid lines. This um, same thing you can do it uh, from the visibility graphics. For example, if I go in visibility graphics, uh, the shortcut is VG or VV. Go to the annotation category, look for my sections here and switch them off. If you have right click hide and view category, you will also see that category hidden in the visibility graphics. For example, this grid here, I'm going to switch that off. So if you want this back, you can always go to the visibility graphics again go to the grid lines and switch them on from here. I'm going to keep it off. The next thing I want to see is this um, little uh, compound wall that I have in the front of my vest elevation. And I want, don't want to see it in my elevation. One th way you can hide it is just simply click, right click, hide and view elements. Another way you can do it is using the floor plan view and adjust your elevation. So currently, if I click on my elevation mark, I see that I my elevation begins from here. So the depth of my view is currently set to far clipping no clip, which means infinite. All the elements infinitely in this view depth are included in the elevation. But you can always adjust this far clipping to adjust your view depths. But before we get there, I want to adjust my beginning point. So I'm going to click on my elevation mark and drag this little blue line inside of my compound. So I don't see this element and I will see this particular two walls in section. So my elevation begins from here. Now where does it end? I don't want infinite elements in my elevation. So I will go into my far clipping and adjust either clip without line or clip with line. The difference between the two is when you have clip with line, the sill out of the cutting plane is going to be there. And if you do clip without line, the sill out of the elements being cut at the cutting plane is not going to be there. I'm going to do clip with line. So now you have the ending point available. You can adjust this range, just like you do it in section views, to adjust what elements should be included in this view depths. I'm going to make it up till end of this particular wall here. Now, if I go back to my elevation, I'll see that my two of these my compound walls are in section, my topo surface is in section, and I see the elements up till the end of my building. So if I go back to my floor plan view and adjust my view depths to include only the elements up to grid um, F, for example, you will see that some of the elements have disappeared from my elevation. This is because uh, those elements are outside of your view depth. So you can adjust really your elevation to include the elements that you want in your elevation. Now, the next thing I want to do is crop my view and I have only the limits of the view that I want to uh, make a presentation of. So let's switch on the crop region and also switch on the crop. And I'm going to adjust the view that includes only up till here. I'm going to take my levels and pull them out a little bit so that they don't overlap with my building. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can make a presentation of your elevation. Every designer, every user likes to do it differently. They all have their own techniques. I'm going to demonstrate some of the features that are available in Revit to make uh, different types of presentations. You can choose the features that you like to use for your own project's requirement. 
Now, uh, the first thing we have um, is graphic display options. Some like to make a presentation in a hidden line mode, in a kind of black and white. You can add some colors using shaded mode. If you want your textures and your uh, render appearances to be visible, you can go ahead and make it realistic. I'm going to uh, start with hidden line mode. Now, this elevation compared to what um, generally architectural drawings really show is going to be a little bit different because um, generally the widespread practice in many countries is to use line weights to show um, which object is in front and which object is at the back. Now this methodology is not directly, not so easily available within Revit, but there are different ways you can show the depths of the your building. So the things that are in front and things that are in the back, uh, we are going to talk about this in depth queuing just in a little while. But the first easiest way of showing the depths is to add shadows to it. Now we talked about solar analysis and shadow analysis in my previous video and how you can set up the sun to adjust your shadows. So if you haven't watched that out, I really recommend that you do. For in this video, I'm going to keep the shadows in the default positions. So here you can already see that what objects are at the back, what objects are in the front. Another way of adding a little bit of depth is to add ambient shadows. So I'm going into my graphic display option settings. Under shadows, I have an option of show ambient shadows. When you switch this on, you'll see some little gradient around your surfaces. This also adds a little bit of depth to your uh, surfaces and show that what objects are at the back, what objects are in the front. So these shadows are also going to give you some clue on that. Another way of doing an interesting presentation is to use sketchy lines. Now this is very much useful when you're working with uh, conceptual design. I'm going to switch my ambient shadows off for this particular demonstration. And I'm going to enable my sketchy lines. When I add some little jitter and apply to it, you'll see that it looks like as if you have actually hand sketched this elevation. This is very useful when you want to impress your client, showing that really I have hand sketched this um, drawing. Uh, they can also add some extensions like you would normally do in an architectural sketch that you have some extensions around your lines. Yeah, so this gives you a little bit of more uh, interesting way of making a presentation. You can adjust the amount of jitters that you want, amount of extensions that you want. And um, here we have a nice little sketch of your elevation. Go ahead and talk about depth queuing. I'm going to switch off my sketchy lines option and go to this depth queuing. And I'm going to show depths. Let's Go ahead and just start with what we have as default settings. I'm going to switch them. Okay. Now here you see that suddenly some of these areas got faded and some areas are darker. So the, what we have in the front is a little uh, dark and what you have at the little back is a kind of half tone. So this uh, feature allows you to fade the objects from near to far. So near objects are going to be a little darker the far objects are going to be a little faded. You can adjust the amount of fading that you want. So let's go ahead in the graphic display option and understand this depth queuing settings. Now this is zero is near point and 100 is your farthest point, which means if you go back to your site plan and look at our elevation view depths, the beginning point is our near point. So it's a zero point. And the ending point of our view depth is the farthest point your elevation is looking at, which is the hundredth point. So it's going to start fading from this point onwards and increase the fading towards your end. So you can adjust the amount of fading based on this idea. So you can say, okay, I don't want to start fading right at the beginning, but start fading at about 26% of my, um, or 30% of my beginning point. And continue to fade till all the way to the end. Once you do that, you'll see that some of these elements started being darker. So uh, that's about 30% is almost about here. So from this point onwards, it starts fading. Another way you can adjust your uh, fades, fading settings is that fade limit. You can either light, um, this is light, this is dark. So you can adjust the amount of darkness that is there in your fading. 
if this looks too light you can adjust this to be a little darker and you can see how these faded elements get a little bit darker so although there is no direct way of adding line weights to the objects near and far like you would generally do in an architectural drawing there are different ways of adding depth to your um, elevations now let's go back to the graphic display options and go to the lighting now there are a couple of different settings here so you can adjust the intensity of a sun so you can say okay my sun is not as bright as before or you can it's a little brighter than before this is very much visible if you are here in the shaded mode let's try that out here you can also add a little bit of ambient light here and you can see how much whiter it gets if i adjust my sun you can see it gets a little bit darker i adjust my ambient light it gets a much darker so you can adjust the brightness of your uh, elevation um, using the sun and ambient light setting same thing as with shadows so you can adjust your shadows uh, intensity so they are a little bit lighter here and they are very dark on the sides so almost black on the side so you can adjust the amount of shadow uh, intensity another interesting thing about here is the background so let's add a little background there's already a default sky background which looks something like this this is usually not my most preferred choice uh, but you can always go ahead and check other options so you can say i want a little bit of gradient around my um, sky so you have a gradient from light blue all the way to the dark brown um, for your ground and you can always adjust these colors so you can choose your own sky color you can make it a little darker or a little bluer so it really depends on your own choice of colors so you can go back to graphic display options in the background there's also an option of adding your own image at the back so let's go ahead and customize an image i have a background image over here which includes um, beautiful himalayas on the back and a few hills in the front there's also a little uh, earthen as side towards the bottom left so you can adjust your image based on if you really want this original size at the back or if you want a little if you want to stretch this entire image to your crop region you can also adjust this width and height ratios but i'm going to just adjust um, this stretch this entire image to my crop and see how it looks like so i have a little bit of earth also at the back so it gives you a little bit of horizon um, idea and there's also beautiful snow mountains at the back you can use a realistic um, imagery if you're using this kind of background or you can also use a kind of hidden line here with a little bit of sketchy lines so this also gives an interesting um, appearance one thing i see here that all my beams and floors have this concrete pattern because i've not added the plaster layer now there are a couple of ways you can adjust this let's go into the visibility graphics and i will go back to my structural framing go to the projection patterns and switch them off so you can simply hide those concrete patterns that you have on your beam let's do the same thing for the floors and i'm going to hide them and you'll see this concrete pattern is switched off regarding these lines you can hide them with multiple different ways you can i like to always do it with line work tool because line work tool has a line style called invisible line and it really simply replaces that line or edge with that line style so if i select this line which is belongs to the structural framing and it kind of makes it invisible so you can adjust all these different lines that you want to switch off by using this um, line work tool now there are also a couple of different elements you can add to your elevation for example let's let's go to massing and site and add some site components like this particular tree i'm going to take a tree which is about seven meters in height and it's somewhere around here so let's go to the elevation and we have a beautiful tree here now these trees that you have from their site component library 
they are entourage elements which means they are they have a particular render appearance so when you change your graphic display to realistic or render this particular view these elements are going to have a different rendered appearance but in shaded mode or in hidden line mode they're going to look a little bit um, weird now, especially these trees uh, have these four-sided edges which are going to cast shadows on each other it doesn't really look correct so what i like to do is that if i'm using an elevation in realistic or rendered mode i like to use these planting elements but if i'm doing an elevation in hidden line or shaded mode i like to remove these elements and instead put up a, a simple 2d imagery so let's try to do that i go into insert and i'm going to import image and I have a trees PNG file. It's important to have a PNG file which doesn't have a background. Otherwise, those elements are not going to merge with your uh, image of your elevation. So I have this trees.png. You can download the many available online. So you can download the ones that you like. And I'm going to put this particular image here. Now, this image is gone at the background because the draw layer in its properties is background. I'm going to make it foreground to make it visible. Now this one is particularly too big, so I'm going to remove the crop temporarily. Take this image, scale it down, bring it somewhere here and crop my view again. So let's take this image, put it on my ground, adjust this, make it a little bit smaller and there we have. So now this image looks a much interesting if you're using a hidden line mode you can use a png file which has a black and white appearance now um that now similarly you can also add many other elements for example if you want to add birds or if you want to add a car or any other elements you can bring in 2d images which are either black and white for hidden line mode or um, colorful based on whatever your graphic display option is and how you, you would like your output to look like let's go ahead and add a few more uh, images of birds here i'm going to make it here now again by default it goes back to the background i'm going to bring it to the foreground i'm going to switch off my crop for a moment until i adjust my birds i'm going to scale them down bring them somewhere here again scale them down i can increase my crop area a little bit here and bring them a little bit here and crop again so using some of these techniques that i've showed you today and these graphic display options features so you can really make your elevations more interesting and presentable without using any additional plugins or any other softwares for photo editing for making your presentations beautiful so i really hope that this tutorial was helpful to you in the next episode we are going to talk about how to create perspective views using the camera tool and make your presentations more interesting so please make sure that you subscribe stay tuned I'll see you in the next one.